the Green Bay Packers schedule has leaked. And I'm beginning to feel optimistic. Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to pack shame, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Am I just being a homer to think that we could actually be a potential wild card team? Maybe. Grossy and breaking news. The Green Bay Packers schedule has leaked ahead of the official schedule reveal, which is supposed to happen at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight, which we will be streaming. But shout out to Matt Schneidman of The Athletic, also a Packers beat writer. Instead, he threw that entire thing up. Sorry, Packers social media team. I'm sure you had something really cool whipped up. But the entire schedule has been released, and it's it's a weird one. I'm not going to lie. There are some really big surprises here. For example, the Packers still have five primetime games, and that's even without Aaron Rodgers. So a bit of a surprise there. Yes, we do have a bunch of noon games if you are in central time or one o'clock games if you're on the East Coast, which is not too much of a surprise. Mark Murphy has said this time and time again that usually like the bad teams get more noon games. But if you look at the Lions, for example, last year, they had one primetime game, and that was because they were flexed into that final matchup with the Packers in Week 18. So the fact that the Packers still have five primetime games, they're still a draw, so that's pretty darn cool. In addition, Packers playing on major holidays once again. They are not playing on Christmas Day, but they are going to be playing on Thanksgiving Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So you're going to see some primetime holiday magic from the Green Bay Packers. But to dive into this, I've been trying to like rack my brain around, okay, what are the Green Bay Packers going to be like this year? On day two of the draft, they got a whole bunch of receiving weapons. They got two big tight ends. On top of that, they go out and get three wide receivers in the draft total. And I'm looking at this and thinking, even if Jordan Love is an average QB, Based on this year's schedule and the talent on the team, I feel like this team legitimately could be a wild card contender. And I know you might call me a homer, but I'm staring at this schedule, which is, let's be very honest here, very nice for the Green Bay Packers. Not only do they get a break because they're playing the NFC South, sorry, NFC South, but on top of that, there's some really nice breaks built into this schedule. For example, the Green Bay Packers week four, Thursday night football playing against the Detroit Lions on September 28th. They will then play one more game between September 28th and October 21st because they have the Raiders on Monday night football following that and then they have a bye week. So there's a really long stretch of almost a month where they're only going to play one game. And to be honest with you, the fact that the Packers are playing non-playoff teams until week eight in which it's the Vikings, this is a great like kind of easing in for Jordan Love because he's facing, let's just say the quality of the opponents isn't too high. But let's actually just jump into this schedule here. So week one, the Green Bay Packers on the road against a division rival again, but no, it is not the Vikings. It is going to be the Chicago Bears, a 425 game. So the Packers going into Soldier Field, Justin Fields, Jordan Love, two young QBs going to battle it out. Then week two, they're on the road again against the Falcons. Week three at home against the Saints. Week four, playing a few days later, Thursday Night Football at home against the Detroit Lions. Also, shout out to the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I know. But they're playing the season opener against the Chiefs. So there's a lot of hype behind the Detroit Lions right now that they could be a contender. They're probably favorites to win the NFC North, and it makes sense considering how well they did last year, or at least able to bounce back. That team looks pretty strong. But they will be going against the defending Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. So let's see how good they really are. But after that, they have a little stretch off because they're playing on Thursday night and they're on prime time again with Monday night football facing Devontae Adams going against the Raiders. Then they have that bye. Then we coming for you, Brandon Perna, going against Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. Then finally, the Packers are back home 
October 29th against the Vikings. So in case you're keeping track, the Packers have two home games from the beginning of the season all the way till the end of October. I told you the schedule is a little bit weird, but they have a home game against the Vikings week eight. Week nine, home game against the Rams. Week 10, they'll be visiting Pittsburgh against the Steelers, and then they'll be at home again against the Chargers. So they're going to have four noon games, so that's a nice stretch there. Then following that, they will be playing the Lions on Thanksgiving. It's been a while since the Packers played on Thanksgiving, so that will be exciting. Following that, they are going to have back-to-back primetime games again. Sunday night football, reigning, defending Super Bowl champs, Kansas City Chiefs, coming into Lambeau. Again, Mahomes, Rodgers, they never played. Mahomes, Love, they played once. Here comes the rematch. Then they will be playing against the Giants the following week on Monday night football in New Jersey. They follow that up with a home game against the Buccaneers. Then they are playing against the Panthers, which is away. And they finish at home with a Sunday night football game against the Vikings and then against the Bears. But that is TBD, depending on how records play out and where things are going to get flexed. But the Packers are going to end against a division rival. It is the Bears, not the Lions at home. In addition, we will see Aaron Rodgers debut as a Jet on primetime Monday night football against Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. So that will be very, very exciting. But we're going to talk about the Packers right now because we're going to break down this schedule and kind of where I think the Packers could win and lose games. And again, just perusing this list because we have no idea about Jordan Love, I think being conservative, you're looking at a potential eight-win season. Hear me out. Here's where I think the Packers are going to face some tough opponents here, right? Let's just say... The Lions, Thursday night football. That's going to be tough short week. The Lions were good. Let's just say the Raiders are better this year with Devontae Adams, Jimmy Garoppolo, what have you. Then the Vikings, they'll wind up splitting a game with them. It'll probably be the last game of the season, potentially. Let's say the Steelers give them a tough time. The Chargers. Let's say the Lions sweep us. I know that's gross to think. The Chiefs, the Giants. That's eight losses. So that would put the Packers at nine and eight. And again, that's if love is average. The defense should, emphasis on should, looking at you, Joe Barry, be good this year. But then again, they were supposed to be great last year. So the defense should be good. And there's enough talent on that offense that they should be able to at least win eight to nine games. And again, this is being pessimistic. This is being conservative here. If I'm to be honest, I think we can win 11 games here. Because you take a look. The Bears, I think we could beat the Bears. Falcons, yes. Saints, yes. Lions, We'll go a loss again. Raiders, I think we could beat them. Should be able to beat the Broncos. Vikings, again, we could split with them. Should beat the Rams. I think we could beat the Steelers. Chargers might be a little bit tough. Let's just say we lose to the Lions twice. Then again, you might lose to the Chiefs and Giants, but I think that the Raiders and the Steelers games are both winnable, which would give us 11 wins. So looking at it just from a completely unbiased view, the Packers may have found themselves in a really good position here. And Aaron Jones said this the other day in a press conference saying, hey, The Packers might surprise some people because a lot of people are expecting them to be very bad. But the combination of having talent on the team, also a really easy schedule with some nice breaks built in, I I think there's a chance here. Now, of course, strength of schedule means absolutely nothing. Teams radically change from year to year. Look at the Bengals a couple of years ago. So that means absolutely nothing. The fact that we're not playing a playoff team until week eight, you might see a bunch of these teams make the playoffs. Though probably not the NFC South. But... The point that I'm trying to make is the Packers have a winnable schedule. They have a talented team. It's just going to depend on how good Jordan Love is. And again, if he is just average, I think the Packers might surprise some people this year. So if I was to make a guess here, I think the floor is around eight to nine wins. And I think you're looking at a ceiling of potentially up to 11 wins here. So that could be enough for a wild card spot. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Packers schedule is out. I like it. And... Now we just wait until September for them to actually play the dang thing. But let me know what you think down in the comments below about this schedule. What do you think the Packers record is going to be this year? Let me know. You can send me at TomGrossetComedy.com or TomGrossetComedy, all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over Patreon.com slash TomGrossetComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grossi. And as always, go Pack Go. Also, another quick note, no Sunday night football against the Bears. (laughs) I'll miss you. I won't.